هذه الصفات في سننهم وخلقهم يقول المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم يدخل أهل الجنة على سن ثلاث وثلاثين على خلق آدم عليه السلام ستون ذراعا في عرض سبعة أذرع ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى يقول وهذا السن أبلغ ما يكون العبد فيها من القوة وبكمال القوة يكون كمال التلذذ والاستمتاع بما أعده رب العزة والجلال سبحانه في تنزههم عن الفضلات والأذى يقول الحبيب عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يبولون ولا يتغوطون ولا يتمخطون ولا يكفلون أمشاطهم الذهب ورشحهم المسك سأل رجل من أهل الكتاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أهل الجنة فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ويعطى الرجل في الجنة قوة مائة رجل في المطعم والمشرب والجماع فقال الرجل يا محمد أين تكون الفضلات بعد ذلك فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام تكون رشحا ويكون الرشح مسكا تكون عرقا ويكون هذا العرق مسك هذا من تقدير الله سبحانه وتعالى وعطائه لعباده في تطهيرهم في ظواهرهم وباطنهم يقول الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم وعند باب الجنة شجرة يخرج من أصلها عينان إذا شربوا من الأولى جرت عليهم نظرة النعيم وخرج منهم ما في داخلهم من كل بأس وأذى وإذا اقتسلوا من الثانية لم تشعث أشعارهم أبدا يقول الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم أهل الجنة يدخلون الجنة جماعات الجماعات لقول رب العزة والجلال سبحانه وسيق الذين اتقوا إلى ربهم وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا وباب الجنة لن يفتح لأحد إلا أن يكون أول داخل إليها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام آت الجنة فأستفتح أي فأستأذن فيقول الخازن من أنت فأقول أنا محمد فيقول بك أمرت ألا ألا أفتح لأحد قبلك وهذا تعظيم لقدر الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم وأما صفة الجنة أولا في أبوابها فهي ثمانية. Could you please move forward and fill the gaps that you have for you? أرجو من الأخوة يتقدموا من الفروات التي أمامهم. يقول الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم: من توضأ ثم أحسن الوضوء ثم قال أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إلا فتحت له أبواب الجنة الثمانية من أيها شاء أن يدخل. فهي ثمانية أبواب وكل باب قد خصه رب العزة والجلال بطاعة قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن كان من أهل الصلاة دعي من باب الصلاة ومن كان من أهل الجهاد دعي من باب الجهاد ومن كان من أهل الصدقة دعي من باب الصدقة ومن كان من أهل الصيام دعي من باب من باب الريان وأسأل الله أن يجعلنا ندخل من هذه الأبواب جميعا فقال أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه بأبي أنت وأمي يا رسول الله وما على أحد من ضرورة أن يدعى من الأبواب كلها قال عليه الصلاة والسلام لا وأرجو أن تكون منهم أي أرجو يا أبا بكر أن تكون من من يدعى من هذه الأبواب الثمانية جميعا وأما أرضها فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنها لبنة من ذهب ولبنة من فضة بلاطها طينتها المسك ترابها الزعفران حصباءها اللؤلؤ والياقوت من يدخلها ينعم ولا ييأس ويخلد ولا يموت لا تبلى ثيابهم ولا يفنى شبابهم الأمر الثالث ما يكون لأدنى أهل منزلة وما يكون لأعلاهم منزلة قول الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم يجيء آخر رجل ممن يدخل الجنة وقد نزل الناس منازلهم فيقول له رب العزة ادخل الجنة فيقول يا رب وأين أكون؟ وقد نزل الناس منازلهم وأخذوا آخذتهم فيقول له رب العزة سبحانه أترضى أن يكون لك مثل ملك الملك من ملوك الدنيا فيقول رضيت يا رب فيقول له رب العزة لك ذلك ومثله 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 فيقول في الخامسة رضيت يا رب فيقول لك ذلك وعشرة أمثاله ولك ما اشتهت نفسك ولذت عيناك وأما أعلاهم درجة فيقول رب العزة سبحانه أولئك الذين أردت أي اخترت ختمت كرامتهم بيدي 
وأعددت لهم ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر وأما أنهارها فهي أربع أنهار في سورة محمد يقول يقول رب العزة والجلال مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون فيها أنهار من ماء غير آسن وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين وأنهار من عسل مصفى ولهم فيها من كل الثمرات ومغفرة من ربهم والكوثر الذي أعطى للحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرزقنا منه شربة هنيئة مريئة لا نضرأ بعدها أبدا أعرف أن الوقت قد أخذني ولم أكمل وبإذن الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد سوف أكمل صفات الجنة وصفات أهلها والأسباب المدخلة إليها لعل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يكتبنا جميعا من أهل الجنة وأسأل الله جل جلاله أن يبلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم اجعلنا فيه على الصيام والقيام واجعلنا في آخره يا رب العالمين من عتقائك من النار أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العلي العظيم الجليل لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم أحمد ربي حمد الشاكرين وأصلي وأسلم على النبي الأمين وآله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وصار على نهجهم إلى يوم الدين Can you please move forward and fill the gaps? Please come close to each other as much as you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward those who listen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward those who give spaces for their brothers and sisters to join in and don't take too much space for themselves. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're approaching the middle of the month of Sha'ban. And I'm not going to talk about what people do during the night of the middle of the month of Sha'ban. It's something we talked about it too much in the past and we will talk about it maybe in the future, but not today. Today is about rewinding ourselves and reminding ourselves why and what is the reason behind the amount of worship that we need to perform and do during the month of Ramadan. The amount of actions that we need to start performing from now and preparing ourselves, our hearts, our souls, our minds for what is coming during the month of Ramadan. What is there for us? What is the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared in the end of the month of Ramadan for those people who achieved the success during the month of Ramadan? And remember, the saying of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a loser and a loser, the one who enters the month of Ramadan and leaves it without being granted paradise. So paradise and Jannah is the reward that we all work towards achieving freeing ourselves from the hellfire and from the severe torment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who are disbelieved or those who go against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are names for Jannah. One of them is Darul Salam, the residence of peace. Why? Those people who enter into Jannah, they have achieved peace. Peace within themselves, peace with others, peace with everything that surrounds them and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has says there will be a man who has lived the hardest life and he had the hardest ship during his life in this dunya and he will be brought up forward during the day of judgment and he will be dipped into Jannah just a small dip to taste what is in Jannah and he will be brought out again and he will be asked have you ever seen hardship have you ever been surrounded by hardship in your life? He would say, Wallahi, I've never seen hardship and I've never been surrounded by hardship. This is how much Jannah means to people. Jannatu Adn, another name. The word Adn in Arabic means somebody who settles forever and doesn't intend to ever move from his place of settlement. And it is giving, why? 
Because in that day, when people are settled, either in Jannah or in the hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring death in the shape of a great lamb. And it will be sacrificed in front of the people. And at that point, the people who entered into Jannah will say, you're in it for eternity. And the people who are being punished in the hellfire, they will be told, you are there for eternity. And they will be more sudden than the sadness that they already have. And the people of Jannah will be more happy with the happiness that they already have. Jannah al Naim, paradises of luxury. What kind of luxury Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prepared for those people who have obeyed the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people who have followed the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, why is there Jannah and Nar or Hellfire? Why? It cannot be fair for people to be treated the same regardless of whatever amount of sacrifice they have given whatever amount of worship they have done or work they have been performing towards trying to achieve the ultimate goal which is the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and someone who just sat on their back enjoyed life have all the kind of enjoyments that they would want to do or have and then they expect no consequences of their actions in the end or they expect to be treated the same as somebody who slept less in the night, somebody who worshipped more, or somebody who tried it to do more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Qalam, أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ How is it fair that we make Muslims the same as criminals? How is that a fair, a fair judgment? And in Surah Al-Hajj verse 20, لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ the ones or the residents of the hellfire are not equal the same as the residents of Jannah. The residents of Jannah are the ones who are successful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, nowadays we see things are turned upside down. The wheel of judgment and fairness is not the same. We see people who are innocent being punished, tormented and sometimes even sentenced and giving the ultimate sacrifice sentence to death. And we see people who are criminals are sitting on the top of the pyramid enjoying life. Even if it is not fair what we see nowadays, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not treat people unjustly in the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward those people who did good deeds for the goodness that they have performed, for those people who have sacrificed their times, lives and efforts for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that time and effort, for those people who have been patient for their patience, for those people who have been tormented by others for what they have done and the sacrifice and the patience that they showed to Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An example of that, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel of death, you have taken the life of my servant's son. You have taken his happiness and the happiness of his eyes and his mother's eyes. And the, the angel of death will say, yes, oh Allah, I did. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, what did my servant say? He said, the angel will say, your servant says, Alhamdulillah, all praise are to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We are to Allah and we to Allah we all going to retain and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say build a house in Jannah for my servant and call it the house of Hamd the house of those who are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every action there should be a reaction it's a natural rule of life and for every action we do in our life there will be a reaction in the hereafter either good for what we have done or bad because we deserve the punishment for the sins that we have done. Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu the mu'adhan of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have lost one of the mu'adhan of this masjid this week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on his soul. Bilal ibn Rabah 
when he was dying on his deathbed, his wife said, Wa husna. Oh, my sadness. He said, Why? Say, Wa farhata. Oh, my happiness. Tomorrow we will meet our beloved Muhammad and the companions of Muhammad. This is the example of those people who have worked, sacrificed their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the description of giving to those people who entered into Jannah and they live the life in Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, their age will be around the 30, the 13th, 33, and some relation 36, and they will look exactly like Adam alayhi salam, and in his height and in his body shape. And Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, this is the ultimate reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give people the same looks as our father Adam alayhi salam, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created with his hands. They will not have to go to the toilets. They will not have to blow their noses. They will not have to comb their hairs. They will not have to put perfumes because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them all these benefits and they will live there forever enjoying the benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they want to wish for something, they will receive it. And when the doors of Jannah are open, they'll enter from it happy with the, what they receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first person and the first individual will enter into Jannah is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And it is an honor for us as a nation following the commands and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to aspire to be like him, to work, to follow his example, and to follow his footsteps and his actions and the actions that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has set us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Time is running, but I'll try my best to finish as much as I can today, and I will finish the rest in my next khutbah. The description of Jannah. Eight doors, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Eight gates. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whomever makes the wudu, performs the wudu and perfects it, and then says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abiduhu wa rasooluh, the gates of Jannah, all of them will open for him to enter from any one of them he wishes. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was there in the masjid when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking. He said, the people of prayer, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, will have the gates of prayers to enter from. The people of jihad will have the gates of jihad. The people of charity will have the gates of charity. The people of fasting will have the gate which is called a rayan the people of patience will have a special gate for them to enter from it and abu bakr siddiq said oh prophet of allah would it be for someone to be called from all these gates and the prophet muhammad وسلم, says yes and i hope and pray that you are one of them the soil of jannah is made with a soil from gold and <coughs> silver and it has misk coming from it the sand will feel as if it's saffron and you will look at it and you will see stones but they're made out of precious stones that you will never see anything like it ever again. The ones who live in Jannah or enter into Jannah, the lowest as the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and the highest. The last person to enter into Jannah and this is the hadith that I'll finish with will come and will be brought forward and he says enter into Jannah and he say, oh, oh Allah how could I enter into Jannah and it's full, it looks full there is no space for me in it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him would it be enough for you if I reward you with the same as one of the kings of the dunya and the man would say yes oh Allah I'll accept that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say you have the same as it is multiplied three times and the man would say in the four times, and the man would say in the fifth, Oh Allah, I accept, I accept, I'm happy with that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, You have it, and you have as much as, ten times as much as that, whatever your wishes, and whatever your eyes would be happy to see. And this is the lowest level of Jannah. What about the highest? The highest level of Jannah. Those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said, I have built their houses with my hand. I have prepared their positions with my hand and prepared for them 
what an eye hasn't seen and an ear hasn't heard about and a heart could not even start to imagine. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among us those ones who enter into Jannah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among us those ones who reaches the month of Ramadan, worship during the month of Ramadan. And among us those ones who receive the ultimate reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of the month of Ramadan. And it is freeing ourselves from the hellfire. Allah wa sallu wa sallimu ala al-hadi al-bashir wa al-sirajul munir Muhammad ibn Abdullah.